How's it going everyone? And welcome back to the Ben is Flying vlog. So today I just want to show everyone what is in my flight bag, what I use on a day-to-day -day basis when I fly, and just what I keep in my flight bag. So let's get started. So I use a Patagonia backpack. This backpack I used in high school and my first year in college after that, I bought a new backpack and used this for my flight bag. I really like it. It has a lot of pockets and there's a lot of space. I can fit a lot of things in here. It is somewhat organized. Um, I try to organize it as best as I can. It's nothing like you can find on sporties. Those flight bags are really good. But from a cost perspective, I think this is better. I mean, yes, Patagonia is not the cheapest backpack out there you can find but the flight bags that you get on like sporties and stuff are a little expensive. And for me, this is the perfect size. It's not too big. I can put it in the back seat of a Cherokee or a Cessna that I'm flying, um, but it's not too small. I can fit a lot of things in here and it's everything I have, or uh, everything that I need is in here. So in the first pocket, I kind of have some small things. So I keep some reading glasses with me. Um, my eyesight's good, but after I get a little tired or when I'm reading on my iPad or late at night, I get tired eyes a lot, so I like to keep some like plus one reading glasses with me. So that's that. Um, working on my IFR, as some of you guys might know, I've been putting updates on my Instagram. If you haven't followed my Instagram, ben.isflying, be sure to follow that for some more updates. But I am working on my IFR, so I have some foggles. Um, I know some people like to use the hood, and I used it before. I somewhat like the hood where it's just a strap and it just covers your forward field of vision, but I think the foggles are better because like glasses, you can just put them on a lot easier and more accessible, and they don't take up a lot of space at all. So I have these, and let's see here. I have an E6B flight calculator. So. That's that. So if you're not flying or you're just getting into aviation, if you haven't heard of an E6B, be sure to get one. They have everything or it has everything you need on it to make calculations for flying. It does have a regular calculator function, but it has stuff like weight and balance. Where is that? Weight and balance, um, flight calculations, speed calculations, um, heading calculations. So you just input a function and or input numbers and it spits out the function you need um, or the the airspeed or whatever you're working on you just select it from the menu and it puts out the number it's a really powerful device it's awesome some people like to use the whiz wheel and i worked with a whiz wheel before i think they're super complicated this is just a lot simpler and it takes up a lot less space in a flight bag and i just think it's more precise making calculations and it gives you a for sure, number, this is what it is, and you're not trying to figure out, okay, that line's 10, 12, you know, you're not trying to figure it out. Um, this is just, it's easy, it's, it gives you the number you need. So, I think it's good to know how to use a whiz wheel, but if you're looking to buy an E6B, get the, um, the calculator version. I think it's a lot better, in my opinion. I have a phone charger. Um, the lightning cable, the Apple one. It's a phone charger and also I use an iPad for my electronic flight bag. So this charges that. And also I have, so in the plane there is a USB port. In the plane that I fly there's a USB port so I can plug it right into the plane itself. But I also have this. I don't know the name who makes it but I found it on Amazon about a year ago. It's a solar powered battery. So it, it saves, I think about three recharges for a phone and about one for an iPad mini, but it's solar powered. So if it was running low, I could just put it on the dash of the plane and it will charge up. And it's, it has two USB ports and I guess that's a micro USB port. And then it has, let me figure it out, a button right here and it has an LED light. So it has a on function. There should be a flashing function. I don't know. There is an on and a flashing function. I don't really use this as a flashlight. I use my phone, but 
if my phone went dead and I needed something else, I have this. So this is a really cool thing. I don't know the name, I'm sorry, but if you look on Amazon, solar powered um, battery pack, I'm sure you can find it. It was like, I wanna say like $25, 30 bucks. So it wasn't too bad really. I, I think it's really good and it's really hard. It's like a hard case. So it can get banged up, I think. So what else? Uh, that's all I have in the front. So the backpack has the front pocket. It's pretty big. And then I have a smaller pocket right here that, so in this pocket, I have a couple things. So I just bought these. I haven't used them yet, but what they are, so the plane that I'm flying doesn't have heading bugs or a bug for the airspeed or altimeter, but I got these off Sporties. It was like two for $10, I think. And it's a suction cup, you can see. And then it has a little, bug on it so it's pretty cool so i'm just gonna use this on tuesday when i go flying so i have three suction cup silicon instrument covers so if you're flying along and you notice that there is something going wrong with your altimeter or mainly your attitude indicator or gyroscopic instrument so your attitude indicator your directional gyro or your turn coordinator you want to cover it up so that way because when you're doing a scan you generally will always go back to that. Even though if it's not working, you're just trained from just doing it over and over again to look back at that instrument. And you wanna make sure you cover it once you notice that it's not working because it's not giving you a proper reading. So I got three of these off Sporties. I think it was like $6 for three. So super cheap, really useful. I haven't used them yet, but in training, I just use like a post-it note but going forward, I'm always gonna keep these it's obviously in my flight bag. So if I need them, they're right there. But I wish I had these in training because they're super easy because sticky notes don't stick well to um, instruments. If you've ever tried it, it just, they fall off and they're not perfect. But this is awesome because it's the perfect size you need for an instrument. And the suction cup on the back, it's not gonna fall off. And it's easy to peel off because it's not gonna be suction cup straight to the instrument all the way around, it's just that one part. So that's pretty cool. I am happy I have these. And then probably the best thing I have in this flight bag, the thing that I use the most is this. It is a Gerber Leatherman and it has a whole bunch of stuff. I have pliers that I use a lot. And then there's also scissors, I think, yep. No, yeah, scissors. Haven't used those before, but if I have to, they're there. And a couple of uh, different knives. So there's a serrated edge one, a non serrated edge one, pretty sharp. So, and there is, um, I can't get it out here easily, but there's a Phillips and a flat head. So there's the flat head and there's a Phillips screw. So super useful. I use it a ton. If you don't have one, get a Leatherman, preferably a pretty good one, not a cheap Chinese one, or the Swiss Army Knife's pretty good, but Gerber, I think, is the best one out there. It has not failed me, and it's just, it's super sturdy. It's really heavy. You know it's gonna work. It's not gonna break on you. I love this thing. So that's all I have in the center pouch. So empty that one, empty this one. Let's get into the big one. So what I have in here at the top is my Lightspeed Sierra headset. Um, I'll pull it out. So when I was starting my flight training, I had a David Clark headset that my grandfather gave to me. That's the secondary one I use, or if this one's broken, I'll use that one. But this is my primary headset. The Lightspeed Sierra, I think, is the best bang for your buck. If you are looking to get a headset and you know you're gonna be involved in aviation, I'd get one. I was looking at Lightspeed Zulus and the Bose headset and, I, and Lightspeed Sierra, and I ultimately picked the Sierras because I think they're pretty good quality headsets for the price because I have Bluetooth, um, active noise reduction and it's a pretty comfortable headset and 
I think the Sierras are made for a little bit of a smaller head. I kind of have a big head. I know I have a big head, but it works perfectly for me. So some people say they don't fit on big heads. It works for me. So um, that's not a factor, but these headsets were about 650 to $700 on Sporties. So a little expensive, I know, but I got them right before my in, or right before my private pilot check ride so i knew that aviation was going to be something that i'm going to be involved in for a long time i thought why not spoil myself get a good headset and treat them well and they should treat me well and so far they have the only thing though i've had these for three years now i left them in my car on a hot day and the noise reduction unit i think you call it got warped so if you look right here it's a little warped i don't know it got really hot and where it's the battery case is where the battery's going here it takes two triple a's i think and um it just got warped and it's not that big of an issue because i as you can see put scotch tape on it and it's holding in but after my instrument check ride I'm planning on sending these to light speed and get them fixed, but it's working for me right now. I know I'm kind of teetering on the edge of maybe one day these aren't going to work. It's not going to have a good connection with the batteries, but so far so good. Fingers are crossed. But anyway, light speed CR headsets, I think they're the best ones you can get. I have the headset and let's see here. I have two IFR charts. So I have a low in route navigation chart um, you need this if you're planning any ifr flying or just in the plane if you don't have an electronic flight bag you'd be using this and i have a what is this one called it's this is a low in route chart but it's since i'm flying in dfw it's kind of like a sectional chart so well, no, this is like the sectional chart. It's a big picture of the whole DFW area. And this is like the TAC chart, if you're comparing them to VFR and IFR flying. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, so VFR flying, it's flight without um, going in the clouds. You are visual flight rules. IFR, instrument flight rules. So you can fly in the clouds, you're on an instrument flight plan, two different things. So this one, these charts don't give me any terrain because I'm talking to ACC. They're directing me away from terrain. The VFR charts will give me terrain because it's up to me, the pilot, to make sure I don't hit the ground. That'd be a bad day. So these charts are useful only for IFR flying. So two charts I keep in my bag. Let's see, I have U.S. Terminal Procedures Publications. So this is another thing for IFR flying. So in IFR flying, you take off, like on an IFR flight plan, what you do is you would take off from an airport, assume that you go into clouds, you can't see anything, you're flying to your destination in the clouds, and once you pop out of the clouds, or once you're on your way to pop out of the clouds to land, you fly what's called an approach. So an approach is, there's different types of approaches, but there is an ILS approach, which gives you uh, lateral guidance and vertical guidance. So a localizer and a glide slope. There is a localizer approach, which does lateral guidance. VOR approach does lateral guidance. So, and an RNAV approach, which is just a GPS version of those two. It could have lateral and it could have a combination of lateral and vertical guidance. But anyway, this U.S. Terminal Public uh, Procedures publication gives me every single type of approach, every single approach at an airport in the northern region of Texas. So this book is just the northern region of Texas. There is a ton of airports in Texas as a whole, but especially in North Texas. So this is a must have if you're an IFR pilot or training in IFR. I have my log books. So I'm a glider pilot. So I keep my glider pilot log book with me at all times. This is my second log book. I'm on to my second log book. I filled out my first, that's in my closet, but I keep my current one with me. And then this is my airplane log book. 
So you're not required to log every single flight. You are only required to log flights for currency and any check rides you might have. And that's about it. But I personally, I log every single flight. I like to look back and see what I did and just I'm trying to get as many hours as I can. So I'm adding them all up as I go. And uh, yeah, that's my log book. So the next thing I have in my bag is a notebook. My mom gave this to me when I started flying. She said to write all about my flying endeavors and flights and kind of just a journal. I did that for a little bit, but I started to write notes from ground lessons and this quickly just became a flight notebook. So uh, yeah, a notebook. I think you should always have a notebook to write notes in, especially when you're doing flight lessons. I have a planner. Um, this is a monthly and daily planner. So let's go to February. Now this isn't just for flying. I have flying and schoolwork, everything mapped out. This is my life. I am not that great at time management, I must say, but I started using this planner the 1st of January of 2020 and it's made life a lot easier. I think I'm doing a lot better with time management having a planner. And I'm going to talk later in another vlog about time management, managing flying and anything you might have in your life, either if you're going to school or if you have a full time job, it is really important to have a planner or just a method to manage your time. Otherwise, it's going to get really difficult really quickly. So planner. Now, I do have my advanced ground instructor's license, so I have my favorite private pilot handbook by Rod Machado. It is the best, by far, flying publication ever made out there, um, ever made. So Rod Machado doesn't just make this book, he makes other books for IFR flying, he might have one for commercial. I have another one, another private pilot handbook that he made. Um, this is just the coolest book, I think. Rod Machado is a great author. It gives you everything that you need to know to pass your private pilot license and beyond that too, because I reference this all the time for students and even personal use, and it's applicable to all types of flying. I use it for gliding. I use it for airplane flying. I mean, everything. Everything you need to know about flying a plane, it's in here. I have this little handy dandy um, instrument flight review. It's super thin, but it has everything you need to know. I think really dumbed down the basic things, acronyms, um, just things you need to know to fly IFR. If you forget something, it's probably in here. So really small, really simple. It's like five bucks off sporties. Really good buy. I keep that with me and I'll keep it with me even after I'm done IFR flying. So um, again, training for IFR. Big part of flying in the clouds is knowing about weather. So I have a weather services and aviation weather handbook. It's an old one. So I got this from my grandpa when he was pursuing his IFR license and he handed it off to me when I went to school this uh, year. So I'm using this a lot. It's made by Glime. Um, it's a little dated, pages are yellow, but information about weather, it's pretty much the same as it's always been. Weather hasn't changed. It changes, but what we know about it hasn't changed really. I have a laptop, I have a MacBook Pro. I use this for schoolwork and flying. I have a ton of stuff. I sometimes keep it in my flight bag, I sometimes don't. I just happen to have it in here because I was studying for my check ride, which is this Friday, the 28th, but really good. I like it. And last but not least, I have the good old iPad mini. So, I primarily, I only use this for flying. I don't use it for anything else but flying. I have a lot of, well, a couple flying apps. I used to have a ton of flying apps, but I found out and figured out what I like and what I don't like. So, I don't know, the quality's not coming up, but I have Forflight, which I use for my electronic flight bag, my EFB. 
I love Four Flight. It's the best thing out there. Like I said early on in this video, if you don't have an iPad flying IFR, I think you're a little foolish because yes, I understand this can be misused in the cockpit and it might be tempting for some people, but I think it's foolish to be flying in a day and age where we have so much technology around us and not using it appropriately because there's just so much information packed into this little tiny tablet and I can put it on my knee and it's there, it's right there. So I love this thing. I have a knee board for it, but earlier today, like two hours ago, my dog, I have a small Australian Shepherd Great Pyrenees mix. She's small because she's a puppy which is why she thought that she wanted to make this her new toy. So this is a um, flight gear knee board from Sporties. I ordered a new one because I like it and this one's trashed. So thanks a lot, Luna, but uh, time for a new one. So yeah, that's what's in my flight bag. It's empty, but um, thanks for watching. And I just to kind of give you a little bit of an update I said I have my IFR check ride on this Friday. That still stands. Uh, as of right now, I have a plane and weather for Friday is looking pretty good. So if everything goes good, I'll be doing my check ride this Friday. What is it? February the 28th. And hopefully I will pass. I'm nervous for it, but I've been studying a lot and it's been going well and I'm enjoying it. It's a grind, but, um, I'm excited. I'm excited for the check ride. I'm still nervous, but I'm excited to get it over with and test the knowledge that I've been gaining these past couple months. So super excited, but uh, stay tuned for more updates on that. I hope to have a IFR um, past vlog or past my IFR check ride vlog the end of the week or next weekend and uh, stay tuned. So if you're not already following, follow this account, go to my Instagram account and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching. See ya.